Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ali Brown, and I'm the Group Marketing Manager at InSource. I'm delighted to welcome so many leaders, thinkers, and innovators here today uh, for what promises to be a very special day. This is the start of a really big change in the way data is perceived and approached in healthcare. Hopefully, you're here today ready and committed <coughs> to join us in driving forward this positive change. If, however, you thought you were here to try out for a Formula One team, I'm afraid you're in the wrong room. Having said that, um, I hope many of you will take the opportunity during the day to try out the simulator challenge and battle for trophies that will be awarded at the end of the day. You may also have noticed the GT Academy drivers have been out on the track on the national circuit who are already using their virtual skills to win them a place on real tarmac, so anything's possible. We have a really action-packed agenda for you today, and it's quite fast-paced. Um, with activities and demonstrations and interactive sessions. So I really hope that um, you're able to use this as an inspirational environment in which to spark new initiatives. We will be filming and taking photographs throughout the day. If anybody has any issues regarding that, if they'd like to come and see me, we'll obviously make sure that's taken into account. You should have all received an in-source pack when you arrived and were registered. And in that, you'll find an agenda for the day to, together with some topics for discussion later and some tables that you've been assigned to for discussion sessions. With regard to terminology for the day, um, we've tried to ensure that the messaging and terminology that we use as is wide and encompassing for everybody here, we have such a diverse audience. Um, please accept an apology for me up front that when we refer to trusts, we actually want you to take that and... Um, uh, basically put in its place any um, organisation within healthcare sector to replace the word trust. Um, but we're just using that for ease of language, basically. Now, the theme for today is automation, innovation and collaboration in relation to a data revolution. And without further ado, I'd like, to wel uh, I'd like you to join me in welcoming Steve Aitken, InSource Group Managing Director, who will briefly set out his vision for the day and set the scene on the first of our topics, automation. Can I please ask that you turn off your mobile phones if you haven't done already? And I'd like, with no further ado, to introduce Steve. Thank you. So thank you, Ali. The uh, theme for this event is uh, automation, innovation and collaboration, key ingredients needed to affect a revolution specifically a data revolution in healthcare. So far, the data revolution that so many industries have benefited from has eluded the healthcare market, not just here in the UK, but globally. This is recognized worldwide. The lack of a revolution means that trusts collectively are spending large amounts of time manually collecting and processing small amounts of data to provide the very basic needs and functions to operate with no time available to really use the data by unlocking the information held within it. It's day-to-day -day survival in the world of trust-level data. What are the factors that prevent individual trusts building their own solutions, creating their own mini-revolutions? Here are a few basic technical issues that are barriers to this revolution. If we look within a, tr a single trust, there's too much data, it's too diverse, it's stored in too many different systems, it's stored in too many different formats, it's not consistent, it's not of the right level of quality, there's too much of it missing, it takes a long time to process, it needs to be produced in lots of different formats to meet differing needs. And changing government targets and, the in and initiatives means that the outputs need to constantly change. And we can go on and on and on. The enterprise solution looks very, very large and expensive. So are created, in most circumstances, a number of small tactical one-offs, bespoke solutions, each designed specifically to meet the individual requirements. And within each trust, there are many. So what is our vision of a data revolution? And what part do we believe we can play in it? For us, our vision is simple. The production of data should be fully automated and available on demand. No manual intervention. Quality data should be a utility, like water or electricity. Reliable, available on tap, 
delivered to a standard such that it can be used and simply repurposed for whatever the need may be. This enables the focus to move away from how to produce it and focus on how to use it and how to benefit from it. We believed we could solve this problem. In order to solve this dilemma, we needed to innovate, we needed innovative thought, and we needed innovation to play a part in devising of a solution. We posed the question at the beginning of the session, do we need a data revolution and what role does automation play? I hope we have answered that question and we will cover in more detail the role of innovation and collaboration later in the Intel speaker slots. This is all new ground we are treading here, so again if we can look at history for some clues as to what the future holds, we should accept the fact that today the demand for data is at its lowest level it will ever be for now and the future. We know that no one has successfully solved this problem of automation. To do so requires a fresh approach, it needs looking at with fresh eyes, it needs innovation, but it needs to be done. I'm really delighted now to be able to introduce you to a renowned industry speaker, Dr Phil Kozan. Um, Phil Kozan is the Chief Clinical Information Officer at UCL Partners and we're really happy to have secured him to speak for us today. I'm really excited to hear this next session and Phil has a responsibility and a remit to look at how we can better share information safely and securely across the healthcare settings to support patient care, commissioning, research and quality improvement. He's been a GP in Chingford, North East London for 19 years and the practice now looks after 15,000 patients over two sites and he still works there on a part-time basis. He's also a fellow of the Royal College of General Practitioners and a member of their health informatics group. So with no further ado, I'd like to welcome you, Phil. One of the things which was very clear was the need for data. And uh, commission support groups were formed to try and you know, make data available to CCGs to help support delivery. One of the big drivers now is how we improve integration across health and social care, trying to bring people together. There's some funding being made available to tackle the problems of working across the boundaries. But the idea there is to really is to, you know, work with providers and commissioners to deliver better care locally. And UCL Partners is you know, one of the academic health sites networks based around University College London with the surrounding hospitals, but actually much bigger than that. So this is the geography that, you know, that we now cover. Uh, North East, North Central London, Ess most of Essex, most of Hertfordshire, uh, 24 healthcare organisations, 19 clinical commissioning groups and working very closely with the uh, local boroughs. And really the, yeah, the agenda yeah, that we face is to translate research and innovation in care delivery into measurable health gains for patients, populations and doing that through partnership yeah, with everybody within the local health economy. Can we get good quality data captured at the point of care to try and Im improve that? And we're working with uh, you know, applied health research teams and the clerks to, you know, to try and drive that uh, translation of what, what works. And then finally, the final lever is, is education. Yeah, vitally important to make sure that we are educating, first of all, educating the people that are already in those jobs. I've been a GP for nearly 20 years. The role has changed dramatically from when I started you know, to now. You know, how can we make sure that we've got the education for those in post, but also making sure that you know, those coming through are, have got the skills that tomorrow's generation of, of clinicians, you know, be they doctors, be, you know, be they nurses, healthcare assistants, you know, they've got the right skills to deliver the care. You know, how can we capture better clinical information and you know, deliver, um, you know, deliver reliable quality, but also how do we measure it? I think one of the biggest challenges is yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the variety of different ways of measuring data, different so sorts of data out there. How can we turn that into reliable quality measurements? Yeah, between the organisations, there's boundaries in the way. So we've actually got a lot of barriers to sharing data. Yeah, we've got the data that's locked up within our individual uh, systems. How do we share that for the benefit of the patient? 
We've got some mechanisms at the moment, and, and the small arrows are meant to demonstrate yeah, point-to-point -point contact. So when a patient is referred from a GP to a consultant, there's a referral letter, there's a discharge letter, outpatient letters, and, yeah, and those flow through the system at the moment, largely paper-based, although that is changing. And I think we need to remember there's actually a lot of useful information buried in those documents. How can we make better use of, of that information? Yeah, the ability to transfer that sort of information and getting it following the patient at the moment is very limited. And that's one of the challenges that, that we face, transactional services. How can they work better with the, um, you know, with, with the healthcare environment? How can they book appointments, you know, order repeat prescriptions, you know, make life easier for them, and you know, eventually you know, have better online experience. So being able to email you know, their, their consultant, their GP, you know, Skype consultations, you know, remove the need for face-to-face -face, face -face consultations. So what we've got here is um, you know, secondary use of data. And I see that as, as being at two levels. Number one is the operational level, and number two is the research. So at the operational level, you're yeah, pulling data together across different care settings <laughs> yeah, to give an indication of quality of care that's being delivered. A lot of research is conducted on highly structured data sets. So there's one there which is the um, CPRD, uh, which is the uh, clinical practice research data linkage. That brings data from about 7% of GP population, bring that, brings that together. It's a great resource for, uh, yeah, for researchers to look at operational data. And yeah, looking at population health metrics, you're yeah, bringing a wider range of data together. We can start looking at you know, what's the, you know, the implication on a population basis um, you know, for, for things like um, you know, disease monitoring, you know, looking at um, you know, how, how viruses spread. And this is a list of uh, you know, some of the benefits. Improving data quality, supporting care, um, better engagement with patients, measuring the quality of care, feeding back to patients, improving access, and I think above all, you know, supporting delivery of high quality care to our patients. I think that's absolutely key. We need to remember you know, that's what we're um, aiming to achieve. If we can improve operational data access so that we're looking at 100% of the population, not 7%, feeding that back to clinicians in near real time. So actually, you can look at practice level, yeah, how well are we doing? Are we targeting the right patients? And then you know, looking at uh, you know, how do we improve that from an operational point of view. So you know, giving patients better access to that information, helping them understand what they need to do to change the way that they live their lives. Actually working with um, you know, providers of individual IT systems, giving better decision support, better prompts at point of care so we can identify those patients easier. I think it shows us some of the challenges as well facing trying to use um, the data that we do have available for research purposes. Um, I'm going to now introduce um, another one of our industry speakers. We're very pleased to have with us Neil Pearson, who is Industry Market Development Manager for Health at Microsoft. Um, Neil joined Microsoft three years ago with many years' knowledge of the healthcare market under his belt. Neil was originally a microbiologist, which you may not, not know, and has spent the latter part of his career working with a wide range of different IT companies, delivering solutions into both health and local government markets. Those of you, and there are one or two people in the audience who have heard me before, know that I have a habit of talking in stories. And that's one of the things we've tried to do a lot just lately, is, is not talk about technology, not talk about product, but actually talk about solutions and how things can change. Everybody talks about the pace of change, throws around examples, and the obvious one is radio and Facebook. Was it 100 million users? Took radio 38 years, took Facebook nine months. You know, the pace of change is getting rapider, and it will continue to do so. Even Microsoft are releasing software on less than a five-year cycle. So the pace of change is, is, is increasing. The most important bit on here is that consumer-driven experience. You know, in healthcare, we are lagging behind consumers, and all the people out there are consumers of healthcare, 
we're lagging behind consumers' expectations. Now, they are used to dealing with their bank, they're used to dealing with their travel company, they're used to dealing with whoever delivers the food, Ricardo, Morrison, whoever, in a, a, an electronic technology-enabled way. They find it very, very hard, either as an employee or as a citizen, to deal with healthcare like that. So there is that expectation gap and that experience that is driving a need for change. The other thing that's driving it is, you know, always on. The whole cloud, continuous access, wherever you are. I've always been of the view that when you talk about transformation and technology in the same sentence, organizations need to know what they're doing, what they're trying to achieve, and broadly how they're going to do that before they apply the technology. Not go out and get the technology first and think, how am I going to transform stuff with it? That's, that's a very important message. And as I say, that's kind of strange coming from a technology company, but that is really the starting point. As our guys have been going out talking to acute community in the whole range of healthcare, it's amazing how many networks there are created by doctors, created by nurses for their peers, of which IT have no knowledge whatsoever. So there is a huge switch to managing interaction using what in one sense are social means. And if you translate that into enterprise social, it becomes a very powerful way of changing things. But the key is turning data, of which the health service is a wash, sometimes joined up, sometimes in silos, but actually turning all that data into insight whether it's big data, small data, whatever, actually getting some value out of all that data. Again, very, very patchy. But the most important thing, and I think uh, this is, you know, customer is, is key. You now, whether we work for the health service, we have customers. Whether we work in industry, we have customers. And back to transformation, transformation before technology, the most important thing is finding out what the customer wants. Better informed decisions. There is a huge amount of, uh, I was about to say information, I should say data, out there, that with the right insight could lead to better informed decisions. But we have to get there. Hello, I'm Melanie Ogden, I work for NHS England. I think one of the benefits of coming here today is the opportunity to network with like-minded people who have a joint interest in innovation and actually talk through how, are we, how can we constructively move forward in terms of collaboration. Dr. Hashim Reza, uh, consultant psychiatrist at Oxley's NHS Foundation Trust in London and clinical informatics lead for the trust. It's been a great day so far, you know, away from workplace, uh, many stimulating ideas and my main purpose of attending the day was to pick up any ideas on how to develop uh, data dashboards in my own trust and I've got plenty of things uh, which should keep us busy for the next six to 12 months. Welcome back everyone. Uh, hopefully um, we've done a little bit of adjustment to the sound, so hopefully it's a little bit crisper and clearer now. Um, can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Hands up, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, just wanted to uh, say that I hope you enjoyed the session downstairs. I know it was a bit tight for time, but I think from walking around and listening to people's conversations, it seemed like there was an awful lot to discuss and people really got involved. And what we, we've already told you is that we will promise that we will 
pull that information together and <coughs> feed it back to you all. And we really want this to be the start of a journey, not, not the end today. On that note, we're going to move on on our journey into the innovation section. And I'm going to pass over to um, Graham Bennett, who is our um, healthcare director, and he's going to talk you through the innovation part of today. In order to create a solution to provide an automated data framework, it was clear to us that traditional techniques just wouldn't work. There needed to be innovative techniques applied to truly change how data management is addressed if we're going to create a platform for a data revolution. The baseline issue to address was how can we create a single product-based solution that could be work irrespective of any particular data source uh, which was used by any trust and therefore provide us with a truly universal solution. We had to challenge conventional design techniques and design principles and the question alone took us over two years to uh, come up with an answer. We're now finding that the techniques that we employed and designed uh, all that time ago are now being accepted in the, the new way of modern design standards within data management systems. The next significant technical challenge was how could we create a standard version controlled solution used by a wide range of trusts to cater for local configuration, whilst retaining the ability to upgrade and enhance the underlying product. These were extremely difficult technical challenges. So what led us to a conclusion that a single product was essential to achieve our goals? To answer this, I first need to reflect back on our many years of experience of working with various healthcare trusts. We, as many other organisations, both at trust level and supplier level, were chasing the BI challenge. We were rea reacting to the requests of our customers. Most customers start with a reasonable definition as to the type of reports that they want to see today. Projects always started with visualisation first, and not how to strategically structure a data architecture to support this request and all the other requests that will undoubtedly happen in the future. In these times of austerity, with the focus being to achieve more with less, why are trusts still locked in to achieving less with more? Surely it makes good commercial sense to automate feeding these systems, not to mention removing the potential human errors and delays through the manual process. So it's not uncommon for the same data to be produced a number of times in a number of different ways because it's going to be purposed differently. And when looked at each requirement in isolation, it's not surprising that full automation doesn't take place. It stays largely manual, and not surprisingly, a byproduct of human intervention is fraught with inaccuracies, uh, fraught with risk, and desperately inefficient. We concluded there just had to be a better way, and this was over six years ago we were having this debate. This is why we've been playing a pivotal role to provide the platform for a data re revolution to take place. We need to look at information as a whole and not as individual requirements. It needs recognising as a business issue. Technology and innovation can provide the solutions, but to do so, we need to think differently. So to achieve our objectives, our product had to be highly engineered and automatically processed data without any manual intervention. To deliver a single source of clean data that has been standardised, is of a known and acceptable level of quality and is uni of a universal format that it can support multiple scenarios, is what we were striving to achieve. To make a data revolution possible, we must provide a single source of data for all requirements. The automatic generation of a single version of the truth accessible by all. This would then enable trusts and partners to focus their time on resolving business issues without having to think how to acquire good quality data. We've continued in our mission to drive through change, challenge traditional thinking, and just not prepared to accept that things can't be, can't be achieved. So where are we today? Not only have we achieved all of our original design objectives, we've deployed our product and proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that our concepts and techniques are now in a position to underpin the largest healthcare da data revolution that we've seen. We've proven that the product set can be regionalised. We've deployed to a Scottish health board and we've proven that the architecture caters for the differences in the way that Scotland deliver their care. This now opens up all of the UK and indeed the rest of the world healthcare economy. 
A further significant step that we have taken, uh, we've taken the same design principles and applied them outside of healthcare into private industry with the same levels of success. Williams have rallied around, even though they've obviously got some really urgent stuff to be dealing with in Korea at the moment for the Grand Prix, and have managed to send us Richard Thompson, who is their business development manager. We have to first design the car, and even at the design stage, we already are thinking about <coughs> what decisions and actions might we have to make based on our data. So because we are very performance orientated, we don't collect data just for the sake of collecting data. This is one, one of the downfalls that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of industry can fall into is because you can capture data these days with all the technology available, the amount of data that is available these days, either through phones or these different systems, uh, it's very important to have the correct processes in place to understand what you're looking at and what decisions you're going to make based on that data. I'm Phil Cozan, Chief Clinical Information Officer for UCL Partners. It's been a fantastic day so far. Great opportunity to look at how we can improve quality of data that we capture, use that for looking after our patients better and improving data for research. Next, I'd like to introduce Rob Davenport, our Group Product Director, who's going to talk to you about the very exciting launch of Data Enterprise and what that really means for the health sector. Thank you, Rob. iHealth BI was massive in its own right, but iHealth Data Enterprise is even bigger. Some of the features and functions. What I want to show you is its revolutionary approach to uh, standardising data and how that's going to revolutionise data within the NHS. I'm going to show you some industry firsts, some things that the industry has never seen before. And I'm also going to change the way that you view reports forever. The underpinning data that has the potential to lead the data revolution that was alluded to by Graham in his innovation speech. It will revolutionise the NHS. It will revolutionise the way that trusts manage their data. It's a standardised data format totally independent of where it's come from. And that's really important. It's based on the NHS Data Dictionary and therefore it's immediately familiar to everybody. The scope of it is currently covers activity data of inpatient, outpatient and A&E. No longer do we have to have specialist knowledge of source data structures. An access of data cleansed, regularly available and available at point of need. And this is an absolute first. We are completely transparent about the way that information is actually derived, so nothing is hidden. It's all there available and visible. Um, and even down to simple things like what we expect the field type to actually look like as well. So we've fully documented and fully made available the complete content of the, uh, the data dictionary. The concept behind iHealth Data Enterprise is to take the covers off the pretty and reveal the ugly. There really is no longer any excuse why decisions should be made on inaccurate data or blamed on incorrect results. But we need a way of ensuring that we can grow with those demands and feel confident that we're making the right business decisions to affect a more positive change and outcome within the NHS. iHealth Data Enterprise is here and ready to take us on that journey. Thank you very much. I'm going to welcome Jackie Sawyer, who's our Group Commercial Director, to the podium. And Jackie's going to wrap up everything that we've discovered today and not just close our journey here, but hopefully start a new journey of collaboration together. We live in a time where opportunity to collaborate has never been greater. The web and social media are encouraging collaboration at an alarming rate there was a fascinating collaborative study undertaken to investigate the potential to, remove pa to improve patient safety and the quality of care during patient handover between surgery and intensive care through applying techniques and learning from Formula One pit stop and aviation models. I have a copy of the report here with us, or a number of copies, if anyone would like to see it, but it was quite fascinating. Our breakthrough with iHealth Data Enterprise in solving the problem of standardizing countless unquantifiable variables and holes in data is the key to unlock the door to a data revolution and collaboration. Of 
course, we still need to work together across all boundaries to remove the cultural barriers. Let's picture some of the benefits of a collaborative health system of the future that we can now address and access through having confidence in what's, what we can believe in and what we can distrust. Inspired health professionals energetically driving new initiatives based on being able to share the same trustworthy data, report formats, applications, research, the list is endless. Catastrophes based on flawed data, a thing of the past. Health providers getting paid what they're rightly due, without having to fight financial battles with the without the ammunition of evidence to support their claims. Commissioners knowing that they're getting value and not needing to question everything in the knowledge that all claims are underpinned by robust evidence. Imagine the power of academia, commercial private sector and health combining forces with a shared purpose so that we as consumers of healthcare are able to benefit from the wealth of combined knowledge. This list could go on for the rest of the day, but we'll stop it there. By designing products that facilitate and encourage contribution from a larger collective, users play a large role in the creation and maintenance of its content. We believe that a world where if you put something in, you get something back and your contribution can make a difference, is more likely to be successful over the long term. We highlighted the repetition and the manual inefficiency prevalent in processing data and the inaccuracy that results. How many times has an A&E attendance report been created within the healthcare sector? By a supplier or by a trust? The reality is that it now only ever needs creating once and it can be shared by all. Let's spread that word and put a stop to all this reinventing wheels, many of which aren't even round. We need to collaborate with other influencers, building momentum to change people's thinking as to what is now possible and what is not any longer acceptable. There needs to be force in numbers to effect a step change. We're on a mission here. We can see no, right, no reason at all why the whole of the health sector shouldn't be biting our hands off for this capability today. It exists, it's proven, it works. And the more people that join the iHealth Data Enterprise Party, the greater the value that can be derived by all. Data, as we said, is an asset in most industries. And yet, that's not the case in healthcare. But we have seen today how this can now all begin to change. There's now no justification to accept that decisions can be based on flawed data or data that could possibly be flawed. Hi, my name is Dick Wall. I work for Trustmark. We sell into the NHS and this is... Omar Mugrabi. I'm a consultant psychiatrist and I'm here on behalf of the Royal College of Psychiatry. And what we thought we'd like to talk about very briefly is the discussion, the round table discussion we had, which we thought was uh, very good. There were a number of suppliers, a number of NHS people, and it highlighted a number of issues, didn't it? Yes, and previous managers, and I think what I said I thought was very interesting is the way in which um, some of the problems that was highlighted are probably something that we've gone through before, um, and we really need to look about how we solve some of those issues Collaboration, maybe? In collaboration, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and it was certainly uh, echoed something that we find that we see customers with the same issues around data and how to bring change. And also something around the anxiety of um, what uh, giving more access to data would do. There's a lot of a lot of issues around, um, uh, you know, worried about the governance of it. Yeah. But actually, if you take some of those concerns away, they're, they're, they're not really founded on, on very much. Yeah. Yeah, so all in all, uh, very enlightening discussion. Thank very you. Very interesting, thank you. Thanks, Tim.